Hey guys, it's Andrew. I thought we'd wrap up this series of videos about Ramda in the context of this React checkbox component by looking at converting from the data structure that our checklist uses back to the data structure that our database uses. Here in our JS Fiddle, you can see this structure here is the structure that our database uses. And we wrote a function to convert this into a structure that looks like this, where each group is the key name, and then we have an array of the values with all of the properties that our checkbox component needs. And after we receive the updated data from the checklist, like we did in the last video, this is the format we will get out, which is the same format we put into the checklist. However, we need to convert this back to the database structure, which is actually much easier in Ramda than almost anything we've done so far. So let's take a look at how this could be done. We'll create a function down here, and I will do r.compose. And this time we're going to do this in the Ramda REPL so that you can see the results as we go from one step to another. This is a great way to learn Ramda, I've found. You can have your compose function, and as you build it, you can see the data moving from one thing to another. So for example, if we start with compose with just the two pairs function, then when I call function passing in the permissions, you can see exactly what we get. And I can press tidy here to tidy it up. But you can see we have an array instead of an object. And each array has this inside array, which has two values, first the key and second the value from the object. So we have the group name and then we have the permissions. Now, if you look at this data, all we really need here is the value from each one of the permissions and then the checked value, whether it's true or false. So let's go ahead and start trimming down some of this. The first thing we can do is map over our array of arrays here and only grab the second value. Basically, we don't need this group name anymore because the group name is in the value itself. So let's go ahead and say r.map and we're going to call r.nth, which returns just the nth value of an array. And we're going to return the first index in the array, or the second item, which is the permissions themselves. So as you can see now, our array is a list of arrays still, but instead of an array with two values, the group and then the array of permissions, these nested values are just the array of permissions themselves. So now we still have an array of arrays. So let's flatten this. We can say r.flatten. And this will combine all of the inner arrays into one array. And so now you can see we have an array with a list of objects in it. Each of these individual objects has three keys and values. We want to change this up so that we have the value from the values key as the key itself and then the value from checked as the value. I know that sounded confusing, but it's going to be very simple because we're not going to do, as you might expect, some kind of Ramda magic. Instead, we're going to solve this problem the way you might expect to solve this without Ramda. We'll just ask for the properties. So we'll do another Ramda.map here. And of course, each time we map, we're going to receive one of those objects, right? And those are exactly the same objects we have up here in this permissions object. So we're going to receive the permission, and I'll just use p as my attribute there, and we're just going to write an actual function right here inside map. And we're just going to return an object here. We can use ES6 square bracket syntax to set a specific value as the key. So what we can do here is say the permission that we passed in dot value, which is going to be our key, and then our value is going to be permission dot checked. And right away you can see as we tidy this up that this is very close to what we want. We have an array of objects. Each object has a key, which is the right key, and the value, which is the value that we want. This is pretty much the structure we want. The only problem here is this is spread over seven objects instead of just one. So we have one more Ramda function, and that is Ramda.mergeAll. This just takes a set of objects and merges them into one. So there you go. Look at that. We're, we're done. It's that simple. We have an object that is exactly what we need to store in our database. Now, let me talk for just a quick second about line 19 here, where we wrote our own function instead of using a Ramda function. I tried for quite a while to use a Ramda function to solve this problem. But after a while, I realized that what I wanted to do was so simple, there was really no need to jump through three or four different functions in Ramda when I could manually do exactly what I want right here. Now, maybe there is an easy way to do this in Ramda that I haven't realized yet. As I said, I'm still really learning about Ramda a lot myself. However, I think it's important to realize that when you're doing functional programming in this way, 
you're not beholden to only using Ramda functions. You can write your own little functions if you need to. And sometimes I think you'll find that writing your own function is a lot quicker and shorter than using something within Ramda. So that is how you can convert our permissions back to the database structure uh, after they come out of our checklist. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you later.